<laughs> that rock. Welcome back to the Type 1 Radio Lounge. It is it's good to have you back, mate. <laughs> you <took that>, Sonic. <laughs> okay, this is Lobo. I'm at the helm today at the switchboard here on Blog Talk Radio. It is October 15, 2011. I got a rowdy bunch here with me today. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hello, uh, this is Sonic. Yeah, Dar Darren from Canada. Steve Gaddafi from Libya, Stoke, Brighton. You're going to have to do that again, Steve. I mean, seriously, we're Americans here. I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking with you, bro. Yeah, I'm Scottish, don't forget. <laughs> get, hey, apparently Freya Rex is Scottish as well, so get him on to translate. <laughs> yeah, if it's, if it's not Scottish, it's crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, Canadians should be all right understanding Scottish people, yeah? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got we got all kinds over here, so you got to kind of learn the lingo. Uh, okay, so everybody, this is Darren in Canada. He is AKA Dudeface on the Friends of Freeman. And what you, what groups you have the long hair group? Is that correct? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. I'm a uh, long hair for life. Awesome. Me too. I just started growing my hair out for the last like 10, 11 months, and it's turned into a monster nappy Filipino fro. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Sorry about that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you just gotta prevail, and it, it eventually it'll work into something that you'll just love. <laughs> it's it, it's getting there. I got past the ugly point, and um, I'm I'm getting those. Uh, your group talks about the. Tell us that story again, if in a nutshell, if you can. Can you do that, Darren? Yeah, well, actually, I just stumbled. I, I stumbled across the article, and it was uh, about the Native Indians and. The, when they were uh, taken into Vietnam to be truckers because the Americans couldn't do shit out there, they uh, they just weren't trained out in the in the you know in the jungle, and they took all these natives, uh, excellent truckers, and they took them into their military camps and they trained them a little bit and then they uh, cut all their hair off and sent them over to Vietnam. And when they got over there, uh, they couldn't do a thing either. And when they were asked about it. Uh, they basically said, yeah, well, when you cut my hair off, I lost all my sensing abilities, my mystical. Because they didn't want to help them, right? Yeah, well, I, I've heard that discussion, actually, too. But, uh, you know, the military did their own research. And, uh, you know, the military doesn't really do research into nonsense. So that's just my opinion. You know, and uh, they did their own research, and they discovered that uh, the natives were right. So they, uh, okay. as far as I know... Native Indians are the only ones that are, were allowed to have long hair in Vietnam. It was actually a, a rule that if you're a Native Indian and you came in as a tracker, you had to keep your hair. So, military, I don't know. Those guys don't usually look into stuff that's nonsense, and, you know, that was their own research. So, all you can do is go by what you read. So, trackers long, killers short. That, that was the rule. Well, that kind of seems to be what it's like. You know, you kind of lose your... Uh, your sixth sense, uh, you know, uh, you know that they claim that they could tell when somebody was sneaking up on them, you know, yeah. uh, without even seeing them. So, uh, you know, I, yeah, all you can do is do the research and uh, go by what you believe. And I've had long hair my whole life, and you know, it's a pain in the ass, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't cut it off. Something from the Bible, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> So there you go, everybody. Grow your hair out long, get your mystical Jedi powers, and become a dirty hippie like the rest of us here. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of long hair, dirty hippies, I got some updates on Freeman and Woo! Jamie and their roommate, Monty. Uh, they, because I know a lot of you guys are missing them. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, they've been really, really busy. Basically, they're moving out of their house and they're moving into that little bus so um they having to strip down a lot of things and uh they've taken they're taking like three tests driver's tests over in topeka the kansas um capital and they've had to like retake tests and spend more money because of um bureaucratic uh shuffling is what freeman calls it and bureaucratic hoop shuffling. Jumping. what's that hoop jumping yeah hoop jumping <laughs> Jumping uh, Bra uh, Brandon pointed out that bureaucratic shuffling has the initials BS. <laughs> and, uh, 
And then he said, we're trying to get you in the middle of the BS, which spells bus, B-U-S. So, oh, oh, pretty synchronistic. Very cute, Brandon. Thank you. So, I think we'll be hearing from Brandon and um, Freighter X in a little bit. So, uh, right now, we're going to be giving updates for like the first 10 minutes. Um, so, I think they have updates on the Tesla Science Foundation, and someone's calling in. I think this may be Brandon, so hold on. Um, oh, on, and Freeman, uh, Jamie, and Monty, by the way, they are taking their final test, I think, on Tuesday, the 18th, and it's called the P-Test, and it's not a urine test. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a test of um, it's a passengers. Go ahead. I heard I cut off some funny things. Go ahead, guys. <laughs> no, it's okay. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they're tearing down their house. They're moving out completely, moving into the bus, and they'll be hitting the road next week if everything goes well with the testing. So, uh, wow. I know there was a party thrown for them last night by Angela and the gang, the Lawrence Kansas gang. So this is very real. Think about this, guys. If you were, if you were dropping everything, moving out of your house, and moving into a house on wheels, man, this is what they're going through right now. So um, that's what's going on. They just put on four coats of paint on the inside of this bus. Lord. And uh, Freeman uh, Freeman and Monty and, and everybody, they're, they're getting it all ready for their electronic open media lab. So this bus name is uh, Miss Emily. That's what they're calling it. And it's spelled uh, M-S. I think that's for mystery, like Mystery Inc. And then MMLE, which is Mobile Lab Experiment. So this is very real. It's hitting the road. This road show that Freeman had dreamed of his whole life. Like he wanted to um, just basically do a redo on uh, Ken Kesey's, uh, what do you call it? The, the Merry Pranksters tour back in the 60s. Yeah. And, yeah. The magical bus tour, isn't it? The, uh, electric, Cooley, the electric Cooley data test? Yes. Definitely. No, I think that was the Partridge family, uh, Steve. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Should have been. Yeah. Should have been, yeah. Shortly before Ken Casey died, um, he brought further to Brighton. And uh, I remember seeing it on the... Yeah. On the uh, it was just before the millennium. And, uh, yeah, just before he died as well. Um, well, that's amazing. And that's why we're here, too, today with the Type 1 Radio Lounge. We're going to be discussing where we're headed with this roadshow. And the kind of messages we want to bring forth, and this is very interactive. I want you guys to let, let you know that we're having a Type 1 Congress next week uh, in Maryland. And this is through Friends of Freeman Network. Freeman and Freighter, I believe, and the guys from Metasabian, I'll be there as well. And I want to let you guys to know, this is not like a, a secret society we're building inside the Friends of <laughs> Freeman, all right? Uh, you guys are all invited on this road show, and your ideas are all accepted and invited as well. So you guys are in the chat room right now. I see that. And also on Friends of Freeman, just, just start sending your ideas to all of us and just what – we should just create a group or something. What do you think, guys? Well, like the show? Do, do. Yeah. Um, we bring in what you, you just bring things and give things away for free what, to where the bus is. Yeah, yeah. That's a bit like Brandon. Like Brandon's too, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, he's already came up with that. <laughs> Sorry, Brandon. <laughs> you know, I should, guys, I should take this call. Hold on one second, and then we'll continue. Thanks, guys. Okay, caller, you are live, 573. Hey, how you guys doing? How's it hanging, guys? That sounds hot. It's a lady. I know. I'm listening to all these voices going, wow, this is awesome. I'll do this sit there and mellow out and chill out and... I already got one sixteen ounce are gone. I got five left. I can just chill out. <laughs> so how are you guys all doing? I've had a very eventful week. I know I've been on the online all day with Occupy fifteen people. This is just awesome folks. You know, the world's changing, it's going positive. Yeah, let's talk about that really quick. I was at Occupy LA the last couple of weeks. I've visited here and there with my I bring my video camera and I like to interview people and stuff and uh I have a 30-second clip, if you guys don't mind, from Occupy LA. Cool. And, oh, yeah. No, no go. Uh, so I got to tell you guys, like, I know a lot of people aren't into protesting and whatnot because of the crap that happens with, like, the cops and whatever. But visiting <laughs> the Occupy LA site, I, I got to tell you, there's something happening here with this Occupy movement here. 
And uh, I think Angela told me last night there's a global Occupy protest happening today. So I think it's like, <laughs> it's basically like Occupy Earth at this point. Uh, this thing's exploding. And I got to tell you, being on the ground, I got to, it's not like what you see on TV because it's going very mainstream in the, in the media, on the news, right? Yeah. And what's happening is that uh, I'm seeing a lot on the ground level. There's so much art that is exploding, and it's incredibly beautiful what's happening. So I ran into this street artist at Occupy LA. His name is Tony B. Conscious. And, um, yeah, he's just – what he's doing there is he's basically creating these stencils, like let's say, like Occupy LA. They look very street and very L.A. And he's just basically spray painting T-shirts for free there. And giving them away so that people have something to wear when they're walking around. And uh, I got him on camera, and he just went on this, like, this five-minute just flow. And I got, like, 30 seconds for you. Hold on a second here. What is art? A-R-T. Always resonating truth. Hey, Let the truth shine that. through you, through your art, through your works, through everything you do. Truth, love, and light should shine through. Even when you're protesting, Dr. Cornell West says, justice is what love looks like in public. So what do you look like in public? Do you look angry all the time or do you look like love? Do you look like justice? That's the question we must ask ourselves. So there you go. That was Tony B. Conscious, yeah. What do you guys think of that there, man? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Good message. Yeah. Very good message. Yeah. I love that. He says, art. What is art? Always resonating truth. And, uh, yeah. It's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So these are the kinds of people you're finding down at the Occupy protest. It's not like what you're seeing on TV where they get the craziest people they can find. And, and they tell you their list of demands, the Occupy protest. And it's total propaganda, BS. And... Uh, Tired of it, but the thing is, with the Occupy protests, this thing's exploding all across the country and around the globe. It's looking like, and uh, it, there's something very real happening here, and uh, I just don't know where. Oh, to wait, go. Yeah, it's really rad. It's yeah, it's explosive. So, uh, Carolyn, you've you've been on these Occupy protests as well, correct? Oh, I've been going nuts with these folks, and. First, I want to tell everybody to go to Friend of Freeman's for the best social network. You want to get together with the folks that think the same and think the same. We can share information and get together and get some people together. We have, like, we let people know where we're at, where people can come together to people's houses and have some good times, too, and not just getting serious. So, you know, once that to me, that's the best social network to go to. But if you also want to get, you know, we don't have to just preach to the choir. So if you want to, go to my Facebook page, Carolyn Rose Goida. I have had... Had had I've been on for hours today, and you guys know, I mean, I've been dealing with some personal stuff. So it's like, man, I've been on there with I Occupy Taipei, Occupy um, Philippines, Occupy Denmark, Occupy uh, Tel Aviv again, Occupy Cairo again, um, Occupy Ireland, Denmark, Sweden, Norway. I'm gonna forget somebody, piss them off. But I'm telling you, there, it, it, there's literally. 1,500 places online that are already on Occupy Together on their list, but there's, there's at least 100 I know of, and I've been going back and forth with emails. And, I mean, I'm talking about Occupy has got at least 1,000 people on their page. So, you know, there's, there's, there's another, you know, 10,000 of them with just a half a dozen people that are trying to get it together, even in little rural areas and other small areas. But, I mean, my God, I mean, they're, they're getting it, – Occupy Philippine people are getting excited. Uh, Occupy Australia, Occupy New Zealand had a bunch of people, and there was even some violence there today, but we're trying to keep everything calm and peaceful. Yes. We're reminding everybody, do not respond to violence with violence. You know, we got to respond to it with peace. We need to respond to it with positive vibes, relax, stay calm. They want to, you know, there's going to be provocateurs on both sides, so be cool. You don't want to be, you know, feeding into this to give them an excuse to, like, you know, Increase the martial law creep. No, we want to increase the, you know, we want to go back to the freedoms and the rights that we had. So, you know, they get violent. It's just like that great guy that stood in front of that tank, you know, in the Chinese square. Yes. And, you know, putting the old flower yeah, awesome. in the tank thing. 
So we got to stay calm. Everybody be cool. Like I said, if you want to go to my Facebook page, you can see. I mean, I'm telling you, it's just it's just blowing my mind, and I promised people I would do that. So I spent all day today. We got it out there, and there's some cool stuff. There's some great speeches from people, and I'm, I'm trying to put the positive pictures of when, you know, they take off their ninja suits, you know, these goofballs, you know, I mean, that's crazy, that's why the cops put on the ninja suits, you know, woo, uh, like you're supposed to be terrified, woo, woo, um, you know, and it's like, no, they took them off, and they're, they're meeting with people, and they're in their cameras, too, in the pictures, and I got pictures of uh, Iraq veterans against the war down there at D.C. on my page, so there's some cool people, I got people that are in permaculture, they got their signs up, they're going, hey, we want to get rid of the GMA, GMO food, you know, so it's like, this is all a positive movement, got to stay calm, we got to stay peaceful, got to kick butt, but in a peaceful way. Yes. Yeah, and I think uh, up here in Canada, this is Dude Face, up here in Canada, they're... Uh, hey, how's it going? Good, good. Uh, they're kind of having a hard anyway? time. Pardon? I'm in Calgary, Where Alberta. Calgary, cool. Alberta. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's a big city, so, we, you know. Oh, yeah. I'm coming um, up to uh, watch a hockey game sometime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're kind of having a hard time... Uh, thrown a negative spin on that whole thing up here you know uh, i haven't really seen the same kind of broadcast that we normally see about it uh you know so so it's a good thing i think they're they're uh they're having a harder time with this one corrupting yeah. it so i think it's going good i gotta re get some sort of feedback here <laughs> okay. uh, yeah you know what I wish you'd tell more about Canada because I've, I've had some friends, Occupy folks in Nova Scotia, Winnipeg, Montreal, Quebec, Vancouver, uh, Saskatchewan. I mean, it's like people have just been totally ignoring the fact that it's outside the United States. And, of course, in the United States, we all think this is the only place there is. That's why I love you guys. I love you guys in Brighton because it's like waking people up to go, oh, wow, okay, there's, there's people over there? Okay. Yeah, you know, I it's know. Like, See, uh, Americans are like, you know, we you don't guys, even seem so. to realize there's anything about above the Canadian border, except for hockey and Moosehead, you know? <laughs> no, it's basically just like you guys, except like I was telling Lobo in the podcast I did uh, the, the other day there, is, uh, we're British rule still. We still got the queen cool. on our money and British. Well, that's not cool, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah no, it's, well, it's not, yeah, but it's basically the same thing. It's just, uh, you know, it's just the European end of it there, a little bit more Latida and not as, you know, uh, uh, the queen is still like a goddess over here, so I don't know why, but she is. Hey, you should have seen it here. I had pe I knew people. I'm in the Midwest. Took off for work and lied to take sick days so they could watch that last wedding. And I loved what they liked it about the <laughs> wedding with the you know the whole you know what it really happened. You know what was going on at the same time they were you know. Uh, yeah, that was great. Uh, I saw that. Yeah, they were anointing a pope at the same time, and you're like, well, holy crap. But it's like, I, I just think it's awesome because, you know, what, what people need to understand, though, is 99% in Canada is the same as 99% here, as in Brighton yeah. in England, and, and the same thing in Denmark, and, and the cool guys at Red Ice in Sweden, and, uh, you know, I, I got friends in Greece that that are busting their butt and, you know, God, risking their lives. People in Brazil that are in Occupy Brazil, hey, the 99 is the same everywhere. Now, you know, I, I think it is funny that the royalty is as much there, but, you know, seriously, it is as much here. It's like Americans went nuts over that wedding, and I'm sitting there going, you know, it's the old story. Why do, why do people want to genuflect in front of people because of their DNA or who their family's been banging when you wouldn't breed a dog the way these people breed each other? Yeah, really? it's, it's it, our version of Hollywood over here. I mean, you when you, you wouldn't, you really would not interbreed your cats, your dogs, your cows, or sheep the way the royalty has been inbred. But for some yeah, reason, that seems to give them some sort of credence. And the woman is the most richest person in the world, I think, except for Oprah, maybe. You know, she's, she's the biggest <laughs> land owner in the world. She owns like yeah. a third of the planet. Well, you know, and I used to actually, as a kid, admire her because I used to see the pictures of her, you know, walking through the rubble, you know. Oh, wow, man, she, that woman had some, you know, kahunas for a woman. And I thought, wow, yeah, she's got some guts out there after the V1s and V2s. Well, then you find out it's their own damn bank that was funding Hitler, and you're like going, oh, kiss my butt. You know, this was a <laughs> stage photo, you know. This is like, you know, when, you know, uh, you know, King George over here with Dar Cheney, and he flew onto the carrier like, hey, a mission accomplished. These guys just make these pictures up, you know. Yeah. Definitely. Sorry, Fajik, I think we walked over here. What, you were wanting Sorry to about that, yeah. Yeah, Sorry. I was just going to say that um, you're comparing the royals to Hollywood, the, sort of, the whole spectacle that goes on around them. Well, I noticed when um, uh, the Hollywood thing was going, uh, 
Yeah. Oh, can you get closer to the mic, please? Yeah, Ips. yeah thanks. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, when they were going around Canada and America, they were really trying to bring in this kind of association of the Royals with Hollywood. They were going to Hollywood premieres and mixing with uh, the glitterati of Hollywood. So they're trying to kind of merge these boundaries between royalty and Hollywood. And I think that's a, a kind of road that they're going to try and go down more and more with William and Kate. Uh, you know, because the Queen and Prince Philip, come on. They ain't Hollywood. You know, they, they ain't Hollywood, <laughs> are they? But they're kind of going to, you know, try and, you know, make Will and Kate Kind of well, he, he is the Sun King, isn't he? He is yeah. the Sun King. He was born on the 21st of yeah. well, June. Uh, um, to his mother Isis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the moon goddess. Yeah. Well, yeah. uh... This is Freeman's fault. We only know this because Freeman told us. That. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah, no kidding. <laughs> that's a good point she made, though. You know, it's true. It's like the, our 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 Hollywood wants to title our royalty, but let's face it, so does the politicians here, and I'm sure they I know they do in Canada, and so oh, yeah, and, yeah. and I know they do in Australia, and New Zealand too. And, and, you know, there's and even there's still some folks in India that want to still hang on to that stuff, and it's like. They're sitting there, and it's like, holy crap. But then when you look at it, look at our presidents. They're all related to these guys. It's like, my God, like I said, they're so inbred. It's like, man, you know, it's just crazy. It's like, you know. Involved, would they? So you wouldn't have any yeah. other people yeah. and their people involved in running their colonies. Simple as that, really. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's crazy. Well, you know, you even get into all of our history. I mean, I used to sit there and think, you know, I was like every other American. It's like even with the Civil War, you thought it was this way or that way. Then you find out the British were funding this and that to try to break up the country, and you're like going, hey, wait a minute, what the hell's going on here? It's like, you know, you're like going, all right, who wrote the books? And then you find out who owns the publishing companies that wrote the textbooks, and you're like going, all right, him, you know, the 16 ounce or the hell with this. <laughs> well, guys. Oh, it's about that time, guys. It's time for a smoke break. Yeah. So, uh, all right, we got four minutes, and uh, I'll catch you guys on. Yeah, I, I don't do Facebook chat. Sorry, man. <laughs> I, got, I got too many people on there I don't want to talk to. Come on. Oh, I'll keep it. I'll have to slap him. I got my friends of Oh, I got my friends of Freeman up. I got my friends of Freeman up, but I don't only chat with the choir. I got to chat with everybody. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're right. If you, if you can hear us, Lobo, I just wanted to say I've got a little um, kind of thought pattern that I've sprung up on this week that I wouldn't mind just having a little chat about for five minutes. All right, Pai Chick, go ahead, baby. Okay. Keep talking. Go ahead, Pai Chick. Oh. Just keep talking to him. You've got a piece. You're wrong. Oh, is it, are we? We're yeah. not listening to music anymore. No. Okay. <laughs> hey, tell us more about you. Did you find any more springs? I'm crank on a little bit here. Oh, I don't know um, if they can hear us. It's something that uh, came up to me this week uh, that I wanted to look into. This notion of attack and of uh, things being attacked, attacking um, banks being attacked, government on the attack. All, all these things seem to be on the attack. And the reason that I started um, looking into this was. After um, my husband Steve here told me about um, an interview that John Lash had done with Thomas Malone on Telestai Radio, and the story involved Thomas Malone and his experience being invited to a prestigious dojo in Japan to practice Zazen. And uh, when he got there, he had uh, to hand over all his possessions, and he was told that uh, he couldn't leave uh, once he'd entered. That was it quite hardcore, um, and in, in there while practicing, uh, basically he was attacked um, and underwent uh, torture and abuse, um, and he, he couldn't leave, he was told, uh, you know, he'd be severely beaten if he was to leave, and this went on for quite a few days with little food or sleep, and you know, it's really, it's rather a harsh story actually to, to recount, but uh, in the end he did realise that this was bracked up, <laughs> this, was, this was something that was not good for him or his soul or his spiritual journey or anything, and he just had to get out of there, which wasn't easy, but he had, he had the determination, he won through and he did get out of there, and a few days later he met a friend who'd been in there with him, and his friend 
um, they'd go, oh, you know, after you left, it, it, it was good, you know, things, uh, things went okay, we had a party, and then uh, when the new guys came in, we got to do the beating, <laughs> and got to beat those guys up. So, you know, this is a really, really messed up brainwashing, wearing the spirit down, breaking them, and then uh, reasserting them as perpetrators of violence. And you know, this is not spiritual teaching, this is brainwashing. And he even said that to endure this, um, he began cutting off from reality and was imagining a clock and time passing. And, well, that's the first stages of trauma-based mind control, where you begin to disassociate and fit into another self. Exactly. So, deal with the situations in another sort of you know, made-up landscape or something. And um, the Eastern, te Eastern teachings um, have some very sincere and honest uh, lessons. And with a good teacher, you can prosper with those teachings. But what you find these days is that, are that these lessons are either misinterpreted or just part of the teachings are focused on, and that becomes the whole. And so you get these situations where it's more about the martial and less about the art. Or you get cults uh, and all that, that they involve, which is usually, again, just part of the teaching. And then, um, you know, the, the teacher or the guru has the, uh, the, 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 the... It's all placed on them that they are the one to worship and that you're only getting what you get because of them. And it's never because of your own endeavors in life and your own endeavor in learning. And, uh, but what I wondered was how many people under pressure in similar situations um, how, where, you know, where you're putting in a situation where you're, you're told that things are special, uh, you, you, said, you, think, you think you're there for a good reason or something, you're made to feel good or special to be part of something. I wonder how many people in those situations would be able, even though it's very difficult how you'd be, if you would be able to say um, no and turn away, turn away from it, um, you know, enough, and, and just leave. And this is, is a very important lesson, and I don't want to undermine the truth of, uh, of these teachings, because qualities of endurance are important, and in martial arts and spiritual tra training, sometimes an important opening or breakthrough occurs often after. And this is incredibly important because if you give up, as soon as things get tough, then you're never going to develop a core in yourself and you'll ne never develop the qualities of strength um, that you need um, to be a whole developed, um, sane person in life, you know. And, I mean, having kids and relationships, these are the commitments and the endurances that, that develop us in life. And, you know, the rewards from these kind of things are many, many, and beautiful. You know, children and families, and, and they can lift your heart and spirit in so many ways. But it's through wisdom and an understanding of yourself you can recognize what is hard but beneficial and what is hard but abusive and serves no purpose to you. And, well, this is our life, essentially. And a sort of series of endurances, if you like, but, um, but it can lift us and connect us deeply to ourselves and to the source of all things and to, uh, to, to something greater and more, and the more sincere the commitment and power you put into your life, the greater the connection can be to your source, energy, power, whatever you might want to call it. Call it. And then the practice of Kumite in martial arts is working with a partner or group, and it requires that full commitment of you uh, within uh, the practice. Because if, you, um, if you're, you're practicing and it's just, it's just a weak, if you don't have your full commitment, it's just a weak, empty dance. But if you, uh, if, then again, if you're all kind of, ah, you know, and all kind of locked in your muscles. It's got to be balanced. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's got to be balanced because if you're if you're locked in your muscles and uh, and then you just think that you're 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 making a big strong 
thing, but you're not. You're just getting a reaction in your body that feels strong, but it isn't. It's just reaction that you're giving. And I see some of the, the sort of attacking a bit like this at the moment. Um, you know, some kind of weak things and some, you know, maybe thinking that something's happening when it's not. And, um, you know, because we have the banks and they're all kind of like, oh, we have your money and, oh, no, whoops, I dropped it down a hole. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> tell me about that. <laughs> And you know, and we're all kind of like, why are you? And getting all really angry at the bank because they're, you know, holding these things in front, dangling these things in front of them, going, whoops, I lost it for you, all oh, here, Flutterfingers. Uh, I know. And um, can you give me some more? Yeah. yeah. Can, we keep... can you give me some more to dangle over <laughs> this big hole because my Flutterfingers just keep losing it all. <laughs> and you know, everyone's getting so angry about this and. Uh, and, it, you know, shouting at banks isn't really going to change anything because the only way to hurt a bank is to say, I don't need money, I don't need your money anymore, stick it up your arse, you know, for your ass if you're in America. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, mean, meanwhile, well, it, it, because I feel like what they're doing, it's a little bit of a, a tease, a bit of a game that they're playing and... Uh, you know, meanwhile, you look behind you, uh, you, 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 you're caught up in this money thing, but the, the barn is on fire, and your, your attention would be better served looking at the barn and where the fire, where the trouble really is, you know, and, that, the, and there are many things that you could use as an analogy for the barn, but let's say um, the fact that children are being abused and killed and tortured by these people in the most hideous ways, and yet we're attacking them for the money, and what they're doing with the money, and, you know, we're, we're worried about the money when the kids, we should be more worried about something that actually does exist compared to something that doesn't exist. Well, well I, would, I would say that people are waking up, uh, but uh, they're still under the money spell. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, we're having technical difficulties with them. <laughs> uh, sure. Caroline, you still there? Okay. I, I'm here. I'm going to go to this call really quick, and then we'll have a smoke break right after we find out who this is. Uh, hello, caller. 860, you are live. Uh, hi. Um, my first question is uh, no Freeman? No Freeman on not this yet. show. Type not one. yet. Yeah, not yet. Okay. I, yeah, for some reason I thought he was set up. Um, basically, I've been putting some posts out there lately and talking with people on Facebook, and I think we're at the point now where we can prove that everything is imagination, and um, pretty much. Uh, well, anyway. Um, we, we got a lot of conversations going on Facebook right now, and I just posted on the uh, Friends of Freeman uh, forums a major key to the Hall of Records, and if you guys take a look at that, um, okay. basically what what's going to happen is I think when people, when the majority of people start to grasp this concept, um, things are going to start changing, and I don't know if you ever heard of, like, fourth-dimensional objects appearing. Um, technically, that is possible. And it's just a whole new way of looking at things. Yeah. And uh, so I also put a link in there to where the conversation is probably going to happen. Um, I have a Hall Records folder. And basically, um, you just got to keep in mind that everything that's bad is really good if you look at it that way. So if, if something seems confusing or anything like that, just keep in mind that everything's super positive. And, uh, you know, it sounds pretty out there, but we've been working on this for quite a while now. And um, the picture is just a small piece. It's not really the uh, numbers part, more like the letters. And how M and N is the uh, middle of the alphabet kind of power spot. So basically take a look at the picture on the forum. I just posted it. Um, I guess you can search on Colorado or whatever and um, find
find me on Facebook. If you want to friend me, go ahead. And we've been having some really interesting conversations. So you can look back in my post from the last two or three days, and you'll get the gist of it, um, where we've been headed. Um, each picture I posted probably has about 100 uh, comments or so. And um, I have a couple of main guys on there that um, are really uh, are into this stuff. So we're, we're busting it out. And I think this whole Wall Street thing or Occupy is just is nothing compared to this. Money is nothing, you know, once people grasp the concept. So I want everybody to just take a quick look at it. Um, don't think of it as like a funny, silly picture. Um, really think about it. And if you have, you know, if you want to know more, go back and look at some of the other posts about the uh, like the Egyptian symbols I put on the uh, on my Facebook page and read the conversations and that's pretty much it and you guys will be blown away and awesome. the whole world, the whole world is changing. Well, that's yeah, thank you for sharing that with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. What? And, uh, where, where can everybody find you on Facebook? What is your name or, or where's the chat? Well, my, well, my real name is Rich Jarvis, but um, it's Neo on uh, Friends of Freeman. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I actually, Freeman's, some... Freeman's actually headed this way. I don't know when, but um, basically, uh, you know, just check out all the stuff. And, you know, if you like it, spread it around because I think it's one of those things where people have to really grasp the concept and mass before, you know, real changes occur. Hey, Neo, <laughs> we're, Neo, we're kind of losing your signal, I think. The NSA is on you, brother. Fucking <laughs> yeah. wait. I'm, it, it's, I'm, I'm high up in the house, so. Gotcha. The base of the phone. Um, it's a whole new way of art, math, and science, and everything. So take a look at it. Yeah, it sounds cool. what we need, man. Yeah. Thank you, Neo. Seriously. Really appreciate it. Yeah. We'll check it out. And he's Neo on Friends of Freeman. There you go. Hey, have a good weekend, Neil. Have a good weekend. Yeah, yeah I've seen lots of his posts. They're pretty interesting. Yeah, he's got a lot of cool stuff on. Uh, do you guys have anything to add? I think we're going to go to a smoke break here and uh, try and reconnect with the UK. No, I'm cool. good, man. Whatever you guys got to do. Okay. Um, this, yeah, I'm here. Awesome. Fantastic. So hang on, guys. We're going to take a five-minute break. Uh, this one is dedicated to Dude Face. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> I'll let you. Uh, who was that, Darren? Uh, that was a little band called Rush. They're from Canada, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Hold on. Let me get Carolyn back on. Carolyn, are you there? Hey, I'm here. That was some good tunes. I got no problem with that. <laughs> I love music. There, there used to be a, a shirt out years ago in the, I think it was the early '70s. It said, uh, "Rush, they're a band from Canada," because nobody knew who they were down there. Oh, hey, Aaron, say, hey, I'm telling you, we used to go to the concerts. I mean, they're awesome guys. <laughs> you really are. I've had some good times at some Rush concerts. Oh, music. Uh, I don't remember all of them, but I had a great time. Oh man, we're having problems with the UK again. Of course, good times. That's all right. We'll, we'll get them work on. I, I don't know who's hearing what. Are they hearing us? Or are they hearing them? I think they don't hear us. But uh, I mean, are the people on the outside hearing them or hearing us? That's the question. That's a good question. I mean, we can yeah. just sit here and chat and party. I still got four cans left. We're fine. <laughs> but are people on the outside hearing you and are all three of us are here in the you know the UK? I, I'm hoping the chat room will tell us. Well, they'll let us know. Um, so Carolyn, oh yeah, I can't get on, I can't get on friend of Freeman. Every once in a while, when I have problems, and as I'm having these problems this week, all of a sudden um, my computer goes kaflooey. So, uh -huh. and I'm, I'm I'm on Facebook, but I'm not on. Uh, I can't get on friend of Freeman again. I've got like three IDs. I keep having to create new ones. Jeez. Yeah, I had uh, three attacks on my computer today by somebody. Yeah, it's been a bit. Yeah, my uh, <laughs> my internet security warned me about three attacks. So, yeah. and, and I don't, I haven't had any in years, so. <laughs> well, hey, I, I'm actually got a warrant against, for me, uh, this is kind of interesting, I have a warrant for my arrest in St. Louis County now Jeez. for lawn maintenance municipal ordinance violations. So how do you like that? Boy, I'm, I'm, the hell is that? I'm a, I'm a big baddie. Well, I don't know, I must have kicked ass with some lawn grass or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, let's face it, there's, there's child pedophilia all over St. Louis County, there's graft, there's. You know, Corp, this is the home of Monsanto, for Christ's sakes. This yeah. is, you know, where they, they, they made, they refined the first bomb material for Fat Man and Little Boy. But, uh, hey, Carolyn Rose Goida, I violated a lawn maintenance ordinance. So there are two <laughs> warrants for my arrest. So I can't even go to my house. I'm dangerous, really, you know. 
You got pretty hot stuff on a Saturday night. You guys, anybody want to come here? Let me know. Oh my God, it's so hot. Two warrants, this gal. So Carolyn Rose. All for my lawn. All for my lawn. Just imagine what's going on inside. Wanted criminal. Just what's going on in the house, and my lawn is that hot. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Hey, we're gonna bring on some guest callers here. We got somebody from seven eight five area code. You're on the air. What's up? Hi guys, it's Angela. How you doing? And hey, Angela. Hello. And to answer Love your you, question, Angela. we hear you on the radio. Good, thank you. Oh, oh sweet. Yeah, we we hear no, nothing of the UK. Those poor guys. Well, hey, how are things going at, at where you're in, in Kansas? Because, I mean, how, you know, you, you've been busting bun. How's the weather? Because it's beautiful here in Missouri. It's beautiful. Cool. Hey, Angie, how, so tell us, how was the uh, going away party for Freeman and Jamie? And Monty. We postponed it till tomorrow. Oh well, I think that's good. Till tomorrow, they're not actually leaving till Tuesday. So today's their last day. They're trying to get out of the house. So we uh, postponed it so they can get work done. Wonderful. And it'll be great. How are they doing? They gotta be exhausted. Yeah, I came over last night and helped them do some stuff. I'm probably gonna go over here in just a little while. See how they're coming along. They're exhausted. They're working hard. They're almost done, though. Cool. Well, yeah, it's, uh, saving the world is a lot of hard work, Angela. Yes. <laughs> saving the world is hard sure work. Is. Hey, when are you going to put some pictures up so we can see what the bus looks like? Because I don't know. They, they probably don't have time, so you got to take some pictures for us, I took some pictures, pictures huh? up. Are they on Friend or Friend? I have. They are. Okay. Are, you on, are you on FB at all, Facebook at all? I, I, gotta, I yeah, can't. I I'm friended you. Time. I know, yeah, we're friends, but hey, send, put some of those pictures up there. I'll send them all over the place. Let's get okay. these things out there and let people see what the bus is going to look like. All right. Yeah, that's Take a great idea. So what are you guys discussing today? Not um, really much of anything. Just at the moment. Hey, hey this, is the October, this is the October 15th. This is the big o- Occupy worldwide, though. I mean, it really is. I mean, there's people going on Occupy from the Philippines yeah, to Norway to-, to Denmark. It's everywhere. Hey, are you still going on at Mars? Huh? Yeah, I'm going at six. There's an assembly. Cool. At so six. It's, yeah. it's still going on at Lawrence, and they're still peaceful. I know it, it's occupied Nebraska. It's occupied Actually, the first you know, actual Toronto. day of the first actual day of occupation starts today in Lawrence. It's just the well, I know they. I know they've had some people like organizing, though, right? Yes. Yes. That's they've awesome. been meeting every day for a couple of weeks. Cool. Uh, we're gonna expand this orgy a bit. We got Metasabian and Crag on the line. These are fellow friends of Freeman. One second. Nice. Cool. No way. What? Am I on? Uh, you're, dude. You're uh, always on. You're always on. Bro. What's going on, gang? How's everyone doing? Cool. Excellent. Good. Yeah. I just want. You know, I was. I was a little late, but I. I, uh, I definitely wanted to come on and uh, kind of support you guys and see what's going on with this. Uh, so, what are we talking about today? We are just chilling, man. We're talking about mostly about Occupy, Occupy the world. Also on the line, we got Craig. Say, uh, what's up, Craig? Can you hear us? Uh, yeah, can you hear me. Yeah. All right, sweet. Just oop, stopping by to say hello and maybe just saying I'm listening in here. You guys can go on now. It's <laughs> a <laughs> week. Where are you at? Huh? <laughs> yeah, where are you at, Craig? Um, southeastern U.S., Georgia specifically. Really? Hey, been to any Occupies or anything? Any what? Any the Occupy events or what? I don't really know of any that's going on right here, so at least oh, I, not, I, 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 get, I, I, I can hook you up with a bunch, so take, pay attention. we get—we got to kick some butt now. Oh, wow. Got to keep the friend of FEMA and caravan going, and we got to keep the Occupy stuff going. we got to keep people, you know, get the sheeple off their butt. All right. Well, let me know if there's any of that happening in Augusta, because otherwise I tend to have a hard time getting out of town. Cool. Hey, you didn't do a lot online too, so hey, you got my name. Go on my go go over on my page, and I'm gonna be on putting through some more stuff on friend of Freeman stuff on Facebook. Go over and check it out. And hey, like I said, send you know, share pictures, show everything. Say, you know, make a music video. That's what we need. We need to have some cool music videos of all the positive stuff going on. Agreed. Occupy. Agreed. And yeah. we need a music video of that bus hitting the road. That's what we need. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. We. That's well, just to let you guys know, uh, know what I'm working on. I, I'm actually working on a drawing. For the bus. So. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> got to draw uh, Freeman 
kind of like uh, driving the bus, and um, and we, you know, we're all of us were in there, like you know, sticking our heads out, like the uh, some sort of like cool Scooby Doo kind of event or something like that. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They're gonna let Freeman drive. Yeah, we were looking at Freeman getting off the bus the other day, and we're not letting him drive, are we? Bus driver from Cincinnati was driving the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bus driver from Cincinnati are we going to let Jamie drive? We're not going to, you know, we got Angela. Wait, take over the bus. You have to leave. You can't stay there. You're going to let Freeman drive? No way. Um, yeah, Freeman's driving. Oh, my God. I'm wrong with it. Okay. <laughs> I've ridden with I'm it. In a, I'm at a JC state. Let me go move my van somewhere. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. <laughs> Wait, should I, so should I have him driving then? I don't know. What, what's going I on? I don't know. I think we need to have him just sitting on a microphone talking. That's what we need. Like passenger side, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Something. Hey, you guys okay, need, we to need to get a hold we of that bus shout, and paint it. We need to shout out with everybody with a yeah. commercial license. Shout out for everybody with a commercial license that could take turns driving the bus. That's what we need. <laughs> yeah, we need some CDL drivers. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's um, they they definitely took the CDL tests. So all three of them, Freeman, Jamie, and and Monty, they all passed. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, they definitely are taking their last test. They took the driving test also, so they passed that with flying colors. They've had to jump through a lot of hoops. They're taking their P test last, which is on Tuesday. Oh, man. Not, not a urine test. That's a uh, oh. passenger yeah. test. Yeah, so you can take that. No, we're in trouble there. Oh, hey, I, 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 I met... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I met Hoffa as a kid. We've got to get some teamsters to drive that thing occasionally. We've got to get some free help. <laughs> like, We've we got to get some people to drive. Because, you know, Freeman needs to be speaking, not driving. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's true. Freeman loves to drive. Yeah, yeah, he really, really does. Talk, drive, you know? talk while but he, he really does look like the bus driver from Simpsons driving. <laughs> 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 he really does. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. Two times. If he's okay. driving, it's a Stephen King novel. we gotta, we got we to gotta have him in the back talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, any ideas? Because we're, we're having the Type 1 Congress next week, and we're meeting to just... Now, up. you listen here! He's not the best boss! He's a very naughty boy! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is the UK. They're hitting buttons, because uh, i got to get them back into this conference. Sorry, guys. But um, talk amongst yourselves. Anybody have any ideas? We're, like, looking for a site, because we want to do, like, four events, I think, next year. And just... Any ideas you got, music, any sorts of film festival kind of rainbow gathering kind of stuff? Anything, mm -hmm. talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to try and bring back UK while you guys okay, do Okay, but you got to tell them where they're going to send all these ideas. They're just friends of Freeman, you know. It's just a big, you know, circle jerk there, man. <laughs> let's okay. just do this. Yeah. Okay, tell them, you know, we got to let them know where it's at. we got to get more people signed up for that network, you know. Yeah, let's definitely get out and start doing that as well. We got to promote the shit out of this friendshipagenda.com because there. I think we're about to hit 700 members. Yeah, so it's 100 yeah. in like you know a couple of weeks. Yeah. So it's going good. Let's get more. Let's get more. We got to expand our army here. I think. Uh, and also, yeah, I definitely encourage everybody if you can get to an Occupy protest near you, I would re highly re recommend doing it. You don't have to protest with these people. I would just say go check it out for yourself because what you see on TV, what you're hearing on Facebook and everything about Occupy is not what is actually happening. You go there, there's a lot more going on than, um, than you think. There's a lot of people there, like-minded people like us, and they're really getting out there, getting off their butts and doing something. And like hey, I said, we are. It, yeah, so it, Phil, what it, you're saying, we are the 99. There's no protest. It's just basically people set up, and it's like saying, "Hey, that's why they use the word occupy. We're not hurting anybody. No violence. It's peaceful. Just, hey, we're fed up. That's all. You know, that's all. We want to change things, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, who's got anybody got land around here in the in, in the country for this road show? Hey, well, uh, we, hey, my my new place, wherever I wind up, is going to be one of the places, no matter what. Yeah, yeah, we need somewhere to all go. That's for sure. Oh, I, I've got a place I'm lined up. If St. Louis County doesn't take every penny I have, I've got uh, five that's, acres that's I'm looking at in mid-Missouri. i got five acres in mid-Missouri right off of Highway far, uh, 70. We can kick butt and have everybody there. <laughs> And Janet, Janet Sharp is prominent some pe people from England, you know, because, you know, she was actually on their British version of Broadway. She's Her her, her son was uh, Gary McKinnon that's been fighting all this crap. 
for years over this UFO nonsense, you know, he dug up out of the Pentagon uh, in the military computer system, which was ridiculous. But I'm telling you, we can we can actually do some serious stuff. And I tell you, I'm not going to leave. They want to drive me. I'm going to stay in Mid Missouri, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do something, and we're going to have a couple acres, and everybody can come there and camp out. We're going to make Woodstock look like, uh, you know, like a, a you know a, a, a camp over at your grandma's house. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, I, got, I think I got you. Hey, UK, UK, Steve Gaddafi. Can you guys hear us? I guess not. Yeah. Well, you know what? They just probably went out for a smoke break and just never came back. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know how it is over in England, you know. It's foggy. Yeah. It's foggy. It's late. It's after 10 o'clock there. It's probably almost 11. It's almost 11 o'clock there. They, these guys have been on a smoke break for 20 minutes. They don't know what day it is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Good time. Aiken, I'm going to see you next week um, in Maryland. Is this me? Absolutely, Oboe, man. I'm looking forward to it, man. Hello. Uh-oh. I, I hear somebody. Mm. Oh, I Hello. That could be them. It's that hot voice from England. It's Nick, isn't it? Yeah, that was. Oh, they, they, they muted themselves. Yeah, they're having trouble again. No, I think they're just partying. They just want us to hear it. <laughs> God, I hope yeah, they don't have video. Kind of they don't have any video on, do they? We're in trouble. Oh, oh. Yeah, mine was kind of overloading a little bit here too because I got so many people on. I think they got video going on. There's something. There's partying going on that they just don't want us to hear. That's the problem. Yeah, damn right. They just having too way too much time. You know, they're all excited about Occupy. They're excited about you know. <laughs> Freeman hitting the road. They just started partying early. Because let's face it, it's 10, 11 o'clock over there in the evening. Not, you know, we're still daylight. We're yeah, we're hours. still enjoying a nice autumn day. And they're like going, hey, let's, you know, <laughs> hit the hay or whatever else you're going to grab, you know. And we all know how, how, how sexy Sitchick is. So it's like, you know, like going, wow, you know, <laughs> these guys are losing it over there. <laughs> so, Carolyn, where are you calling from? Uh, well, I can't tell you exactly what I'm in, but okay. I'll go ahead and tell you. I'm in Columbia, Missouri. I'm not going to hide. You know, I'm, 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 my house is in St. Louis. I can't go there. I'm, like I said, I'm a, I'm a dangerous <laughs> fugitive because I'm a dangerous lawn care, dangerous, <laughs> violent person, you know. I actually let things grow and live and you know, everything else. But, yeah, I'm actually in Missouri. I'm in Columbia. I'm looking at some places around here to buy, and I'm... It's beautiful weather. I mean, where I'm at now, I'm at a hotel, and it's it's actually homecoming at Mizzou, so it's an absolutely insane place. Everybody's running around in black and yellow and yelling things, and I'm kind of hoping they leave, like, their extra beer sitting around. They don't notice it. But, um, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, uh, but it's actually a very nice place. And, you know, people here, there's been actually a lot of good stuff uh I had Greg Ahrens and his wonderful gal, Kathleen, was down there. You know, this is a gal that was actually, she, the poor woman has been in a wheelchair her entire life. And she went down to Occupy, down in Columbia, Missouri, which, you know, there's no fed place. There's no fancy place to go. But there was actually, you know, several dozen people. She's down there. Her picture's in my album, in, in my Facebook page, and stuff. It, it, there's a lot of people that really care. I mean, this is a college town. There's like five or six colleges. But even here, things have gotten a little bit crazy because, you know, you got, you know, Cronky, who is, you know, the Walmart real estate guy here. So things are changing here, too. So, you know, we just got to keep an eye on things because, you know, these big urban areas are getting sort of paramilitarized police, and they use municipal ordinances to go crazy on people. But, you know, as long as everybody, and it's like Freeman and I talked one night on, on his show, hey, we control our own food and fuel. Hey, we don't need that 1%. We can kick butt. Yeah, exactly. Was that you guys, or did I just have a stroke? Yeah. Uh, just to make sure I didn't have a stroke or something, you know? <laughs> your heart monitor's beeping. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I mean, I'm eating pizza and talking to you, and I'm... Um, um, I, I thought maybe God was punishing me because I'm drinking um, a non-union beer, or I don't know, it's Keystone Union. <laughs> I don't know, it's ice beer. It's ice beer. I always go for the one that says ice because it sounds good, and it's 5.9 percent. But you know, yeah. it makes things makes the pizza go down better. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, hey, don't give me any crap. I have a very religious friend who gives me crap all the time, and I keep reminding her that Jesus made water into wine, not the other way around. <laughs> very true. <laughs> hey, guys, I think are it's you about guys, that Are you guys chilled out yet? 
Yeah, it's about that time. We're going to take a smoke break for about four minutes, and we'll come back and we'll continue. It, uh, I'll try and get UK back online, too. So this is the Type 1 Radio Lounge. If you want to you like what you hear, you can join us on friendshipagenda.com. And uh, this one goes out hey, to... Hey, Tom. Yeah. Tell them to go find it. Go get the free, Fender Freeman network, social network. And if they're on uh, uh, Facebook, you're on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, Freeman's on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, si- uh, Zinnick's on Facebook. Uh, uh, are you on Facebook, too? Oh, yeah. I'm on Facebook. Well, okay. Well, you know, you become a friend of mine, too. Send me a note or something. I, I think I am already. I think I am. Are you really? I, I, I got so many show. people on there. I know, yeah, I know yeah, exactly. Heard. I just don't know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's the thing about being popular. I got like ten uh, no, friends on Facebook. No, it's just that you know when mad cow starts to set in, you kind of forget who the hell's on there. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I don't even use it anymore, really. No, you right, got to so, do it because, like I said, you you can't just preach to the choir. You got to go for everybody, you know. Let's face it: if we just wake up, we already know the non sheeples are already on Friends of Freemans, but we got to go after the sheeple too and kind of like kick some butt. You know? exactly. That's the only reason I think that. For, I, that's the reason I think. For, I, you know, and I agree totally with Freeman that we got to have his thing. But that's the only reason that I, I'm going to stay on Facebook is because, well, you know, what good does it do just to preach to the choir? You know, Holy Rollers do that forever. Let's, you know, we need to reach everybody because some people, it's not their fault because you don't know. I mean, hey, I used to believe what I was told, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, let's just don't forget anybody out there. Let's bring everybody in. You know, we're going to oh, have sure. the more people we got, the better it is, you know? Yeah, that, that is the purpose of the uh, Type 1 Art Show, uh, you know, the whole the whole movement. So we got to definitely turn the uh, sheeples around, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and guys like Phil are kicking butt and, and yeah. of course, Freeman, you know, and you, too. And like I said, you know, we got to get more of that out there. And I'm sure it's uh, the music, too. Even when, you know, yeah. Musicians, Nick yeah. is doing his music and stuff. Music, to me, is it's just the key to everybody, you know? Yeah. Hey, You're Type sure. 1 Radio, everybody out there listening now, I want you to send it to everybody on your – you got your own Facebook – I don't care if you got ten friends or a thousand friends. Tell everybody Type One Radio, not because we're on it, but because it's hey, it we get information out and it's fun too. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And okay, it's about that time. So this one goes out to my wife, my lovely wife, Lake Bug, who's working in the living room right now, and uh, and this one for for the lovely Carolyn Rose as well. Uh, we'll see you in four minutes, guys. Enjoy. Oops! <laughs> I hit some wrong buttons, folks. Uh, let's let's try and bring back people and see what happens. Okay, Aiken, are you there? I am here, Lobo. Hi, how's it yeah. going? Okay, Carolyn, Angela, I'm back. You? Okay, I'm here. Crag, you there? Okay, Cragden, Georgia, are you there? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, have Let's you visited go. those Georgia Guidestones yet down there? <laughs> I keep forgetting, where are they down here? Let me look that up real quick, because I forgot to do that last time. Okay. I think it's, I think it's Elberton. I could be wrong. Someone will correct me. But, uh, have you been to the Georgia Guidestones, Carolyn, by any chance? Um, no, no, not, not yet. Um, that could be kind of one of those cool things that you want to look at, but it's like, you know, I've seen the pictures of it, and it's like, I don't know. I don't know if I need to get near those kind of negative vibes. It's kind of creepy. You know? Yeah. And apparently they're on ley lines and all that stuff, too. And uh, it's written in eight different languages, I think. It's supposed to be some kind of Rosetta Stone for the future. Yeah, because it's, you know, it's basically you know, the, the stuff for the, basically the uh, New World Order stuff. You know I mean? Uh, I've got some friends that are sending me pictures and got all kinds of invites. To, I want to check out the you know stuff over in Stonehenge. And there's some really neat towers all over the place, and I want to see so many other places. That, that's on my list, but it's like, eh, I don't know. I want to get... I don't know. I want to make sure I've got the right attitude when I go down there. Yeah, you know it's funny. Uh, Freeman mentioned that he wanted to end the road show in uh, in Tikal, I think it was for the the Mayan temples there. Oh, that's an idea. And he would love to have that on the winter solstice, like December twenty one, twenty twelve, which that would be spectacular, I think. That'd well, be that. spectacular. Yeah, I mean, who's Don't who's down to me. going? Who's down to going to to call with us here, man? Do it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's all jump in the damn bus and go. Hey, I got an RV. Let's take. We'll, we'll ride behind the. Well, and I, I, I'm gonna. By the time I'm done, I'm gonna have the solar panels on top, the vibratory wind turbines. Hell, we're gonna be so off the grid. You we're can, gonna be. You, you can know, pick and me I, up hey, on I your can way. sleep eight in the RV. Mhm. 
Love that. Anybody not allergic to cat can ride in there. <laughs> are you allergic to kids? <laughs> Hey, kids are great. Kids, cats, and dogs, and everything. Anything that's uh, running around getting dirty is fun. By the way, All really right, adorable. Down for three. <laughs> Angela, really adorable pictures. You, you and the kids like got all dressed up for the Occupy protest. I saw that. Like zombie. No, no, that wasn't an Occupy protest. That was a zombie walk, and we went to zombie <laughs> protesters. Zombie. <laughs> cool. I, I love got. It. Oh, that's scary. So Bill was. We went with Bill. He was passing out flyers for the protest, which was the next day. So we dressed up as uh, zombie protesters, took our signs, converted them to zombieism a little bit. You know, it was really great, though, because as we walked through the crowds that were watching the parade, everybody behind us started talking about the protest. So it was a pretty cool idea. Hello. Hi. <laughs> okay, they can't hear us in the UK, but we can hear them, which is funny. Well, okay, right. as long as they don't say anything illegal, it's okay. <laughs> Angela, Angela, yeah. what are you getting? What are you guys doing as far as like getting the permaculture ready for the you know it's fall and stuff like that? I mean, we talked about that like two weeks well, ago. I mean, what are you guys you know? A few weeks ago, Bill was asking for plans for the retort, and this week okay. Bill got the retort built. He cool. did a re retort burn this week, made by biochar. Not a perfect system yet. He's definitely working on it, working out the bugs. But cool. he got one made, did his first fire. So we're soil building. Hey, I may have a bunch of plants for my house in St. Louis. If you guys are ready to take some, you guys can get a whole bunch of stuff if you want. I'm, I'm talking about heritage took, stuff you just can't find anywhere else. All you guys do is all three uh, of Jamie's plants last night. <laughs> Oh, wow, no kidding. We just got to get a backhoe, dig some things, and uh, put it in there, put some uh, hay over it, and uh, sort it out no, in the spring. No, no backhoes, no digging. Well, we'll dig with a shovel, but uh, no big equipment. Why no backhoe? We're trying to preserve the soil. We're trying to, uh, ah, to like, you got, build okay. the soil, not dig down. No, you just, no, pick a place that you're not, not done yet with, because trust me, I'm going to take the uh, first foot off of my topsoil, because my... my house that I'm leaving, I've got worms that are as thick as your fingers. Nice. I'm not kidding you. I mean, I, it's just, you know, I've been working on this for 10 years. Am I, it, it's gotten to the point where it's like black, like 10, 12 inches thick. Nice. I mean, th soil. this stuff is just rich as can bleed. And I'm not kidding you. You could literally go out there and like you have cherry tomatoes and, and, and grape tomatoes, you know, take a bite, drop the rest of them and they start growing. It's just, you know. And I don't, I, I don't oh, get any credit nice. for it. I threw the stuff out, but let's face it, uh, nature put it all together. Very good. I don't know, but that's kind of interesting. What's going on? I hear a lot of noises, but <laughs> you guys hear the beeping noises, or is it just on my end? No, I, I heard that too. Okay. Don't know what it was. Someone dialing, probably. Oh, could be. So where's Bill today? Just nobody. Everybody's out busy today. I guess. Well, it's a pretty day. You got a lot of stuff to do in the fall. You got great, gorgeous weather. You got to take advantage of it. Plus, some, have some fun too. Oh yeah. Absolutely. You know, that's just it. We all got to be serious with the Occupy. We got to be serious with all the stuff. But you know, people got to just remember. You got to stand and watch the miracle and the magics around you, and the butterflies and the birds. And yeah, God. Just this morning, I walked out and I was going to take some stuff so at this hotel. I was taking it out to the dumpster, and it's like it was just so awesome. All of a sudden, I heard this. You know. I looked up, I heard this noise, and all of a sudden, here come these geese over, and they were like only like three feet above me. I mean, I could have reached up probably and touched their toes, you know, little web feet. And it's like, you know, you just got to watch all this magic around you. And it's like, that's why that 1% have no clue about how magical and wonderful this world really is. They really don't. Yeah. That's the truth, too. All right, so, okay, Darren in Canada, he, he had to bail. He's he's in the middle of moving, so... Cool. Yeah, he, it's, it's it's us now. How's it going, guys? <laughs> Great. Hey, we're hanging in. A little cozy, all right, uh, you know? Yeah, I believe Bill went to Topeka to go protest there, which is another city near here. Wow. He was, he's okay. making his rounds to all the area protests, see what's going on. That is really neat. You know, tell them to put them up, the pictures on Friend of Freeman, which is the social network everybody should be on just for the social aspect. But tell them to put it on on Facebook, too, so we can get it out there to the sheeple, too. You know, if you can't get them on yours or get it on mine or something, I'll get it out there. Because, like I said, I've had pictures from, God, about a thousand different sites, and I just keep trying to put them up there. And I keep trying to create albums, though 
I don't know, I keep waiting to break some sort of Facebook rule or something, but I just keep putting them up there anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about the That's data good. mining. I figure they already want they already read whatever they want anyway. The hell it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean we're we're so plugged into this. They know everything they need to know, man. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm an open book. They can do what they want. Exactly. And Carolyn, I don't know if I told you, but uh, I am on a terror watch list. I found this out. Um, me and my wife found <laughs> out. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And I, I don't, don't know why, but that makes me laugh. Join, hey, I bet you we're on the same list. Did, yeah, probably. Lobo, so. yes, when you did. found out you were on the terrorist watch list, have you found out why? Yeah. Did they get any information on why they put you on there? Oh, yeah, that's the thing. They don't really tell you, like, why or how or if you're even on the list. This this happened through uh, U.S. Customs and TSA at LAX, Los Angeles International Airport. And my wife and I were returning from a trip to Mexico. We went on a business trip, and I had a bunch of video gear. She had her court reporting gear. And um, what had happened, they swiped our passports when we come back into the country. And when they swiped my passport... The agent, the custom agent says, okay, uh, we have a problem with your, your social security is not matching. So they pull me aside, and then all of a sudden I'm surrounded by like 12 TSA like agents, right, cops, airport cops. And, uh, mm. Yeah, it was crazy. They questioned us. They separated, separated me, me and April for a time for like, God, they questioned us for probably about 40 minutes, I would say, and uh, they took us to the back also. And they took our luggage, and uh, they started going through everything, asking us questions, but they never told us why, why they were asking all these questions. All they kept saying was, like, how old are you? And I would answer and say, like, at the time, I think I was 30. And they said, oh, really, 30? Everything I said, they just repeated with a condescending tone, right? And then it got pretty heated, and we got surrounded by more and more agents. And they finally asked me, did anything happen when you were a teenager? Like that. And I was like, oh, dude, what? I... Yeah, exactly. I w <laughs> so get this. I was arrested the only time in my life as a, a, a teenager when I was 15. This is back in the early 90s. And I was one of those kids who played with homemade, you know, fireworks, I'll just call them. <laughs> and, uh, right. Right. And uh, I detonated one of these things, got arrested. My adjudication was withheld. I was basically let go. And I, I was like an AB honor roll overachieving Asian kid back then. <laughs> And uh, the judge just let me go. And my record got expunged when I turned 18. And then 9-11 uh, happens, and they passed the Patriot Act. So my arrest record excuse from when me. I was unpaid. <laughs> excuse me, Unpatriot Act. Exactly. So my okay. name is on a list because of my arrest when I was a teenager. It's really stupid. And this is the country we live in now where guys like me are put on a list just for being kids. <laughs> Yeah, great. Well, you're on the list, and I'm out of my house. Join the crowd. Exactly. So. Wow. Yeah, isn't that bizarre? We live in a very fascist kind of society now with this kind of crap. Well, it, it's like Freeman has been trying to tell people, and Jim Maher has been trying to tell people, and um, John Fer uh, the Joe Farrell has been trying to tell people, and Peter Lavenda has been trying to tell people. You know, the, it's something that I've always said. The fascists lost the war, but they won the peace. You know, if you're going to have projects like Paperclip that brings over tens of thousands of them against, you know, Truman tried to stop it. Ike tried to warn about it. JFK tried to stop it and lost his life over it. You know, and these, these guys have just taken over. And the sad part is, is there's like this 30, 40 percent of, they're not even sheeple. They're Americans that are like, well, I don't care as long as I'm taking care of I don't care. You know, and it's like, you know, they got their little pampered thing. They got their pensions. Their kids get to go to school. And it's like, if you and I get inconvenienced in an airport, and let's face it, Think about this. After 9-11, you know, people didn't even question the anthrax thing, which was our own weaponized anthrax. Hello, folks. It didn't. That anthrax did not come from Afghanistan any more than 9-11 did. But it's like, no, people are like, oh, ooh, anthrax, we're going to be worried. And it's like, oh, you know, it's like they, they just totally fell for all this stuff. And then it goes to the airports and like, well, we need to create the homeland security. Homeland Security, if that doesn't itself sound Nazi, for Christ's sake. Jesus, give me an effing break. And it's like, then you sit there and you go to, people go to airports and they're grabbing their ankles going, oh, you want me to dump my wine that I just bought that's sealed from, you know, the, you know, the wine country? Oh, okay. You know, you want to grab my genitals? Hey, go ahead. Here, you know what? Molest my child because I need to get on this airplane and get somewhere. People should be saying No. 
You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. Yeah, it's it's a pretty dumb society. It's it's a pretty dumb society. Go ahead, Angela. I was listening to a, a radio show on American Freedom Radio yesterday, and they are interviewing this gentleman named Dr. Leonard Coldwell, and he is a, one of the foremost in alternative cancer treatment doctors. He's actually the one who cured Ronald Reagan. And he has a big movement. He has a book published and a bunch of DVDs about our constitutional rights and what we can do to combat such things as the, Care, the Patriot Act and how the Constitution is really the, the root of all law. So if any of these laws consti- go against the Constitution, then they're not valid. They don't hold up. He's a very interesting man. I recommend you Google him. I know what you're Dr. talking Leonard. about. He's excellent. He's been, on, well. he's been on coast to coast and everywhere else. He's a good guy. Yeah. I think I, I, yeah, I, I posted great. his you, I, I posted his like lectures, and he's really a sharp guy. I'm surprised he's sharp. Why, frankly. He well, really I, gets a lot of death threats. Yeah, I believe it. Jeez. Well, I'll definitely. I'm trying to bring on a guy that I just met and talked to. Um, can't say his name just yet. He he's yeah he's affiliated with one of the big uh, you know activist kind of groups, and he he fought the IRS and won. He got them to concede in court, and he explained to me how he did this, and I would love to have him on the air because his, the information he brought was incredible because he basically had to prove that he had no name had no social security number had no zip code and he had to con- he had to convince the court that he was just a living creature on this land and that's how you can beat the system in court well, that's interesting <laughs> yeah so that what it, that's what it means when it says we the people that's what he explained to me is that when you see the we the people part you have to claim to yourself to be one of these we the people once you say I am Carolyn or Phil and my social security number is this, they got you by the balls because you're basically telling them that you're in the system and you're a slave. Well, so. you know, that's why people do have to refuse to answer the question, show me your identification. Unless yeah. you're being arrested, they have no right. And they, police keep saying, well, I've got to do that to protect us. Less policemen die than coal miners, than farmers, than factory workers. Their job, they always say, oh, they're, they're, they're putting their life on the line. Very few policemen die protecting us. Now, the ones who do, and there is a serious core of honest, good police officers, and I will never defame them, and I respect them, and their job is getting harder and harder every day to stand up against the other guys. But I'm telling you, these guys that think, I've had policemen tell me to my face that, oh, the Supreme Court said it's okay for the cops to lie. It's just part of our job. And they believe that, and they teach them this. And they create these, you know, civilian police academies where they they basically produce snitches that would make Hitler happier, and Goebbels would be doing a happy dance all over his yard. You know, that, that Americans, you know, would basically do that. I mean... Bin Laden didn't change the world on 9/11. Uh, Paperclip Project changed America when they started, you know, merging the uh, Gestapo SS, the cultists, with our CIA and our Justice Department and State Department. And then when they actually had the, you know, coup d'état that killed Kennedy, it's like these people have been crazy for for decades. And Americans that don't say no at the airport, don't say no when they're stopped on the highway. Don't say no when a policeman comes to your house without a warrant. People got to stand up and say no. And then you know what? Their neighbors have got to come over and say, "Hey, I know Jerry. I know Mike. I know Sue. They said no. Get off our goddamn property." Or hey, you know we're not going to let you set up this roadblock on our street. Go away, Americans. Just like with the '99, they not only need to. Occupy Wall Street because we don't want to scare everybody that's got a money market fund. It's not Wall Street. It's really the banksters and transnational gangsters. But you got to stop the people from setting up these roadblocks that say, give me your papers, please. And you got to stop people from coming to people's houses, whether it's municipal ordinances or, oh, my neighbor said, uh, use an anonymous tip that you might be smoking pot or you might be doing this or that. People have got to say no, but their neighbors have also got to be, they got to walk over and say at the same time, we're not going to let this happen to our neighbor, our friend, you know? 
And they, they can't just say, well, you know, we're only going to protect the people we know or who's in our church or this and that. They've got to protect everybody and not be saying, well, I'm not going to protect this guy because he's black. I'm not going to protect this guy because, well, I think they might be Mexican. We've got to protect all of us. That's the whole thing of Occupy, that the 99% have got to start standing up. I know yeah. I'm rambling. I'm on, a, I'm on a soapbox. Okay. I'll drink another. I'll drink another. I'll, I'll get another. I'll open another 16 ounce. I'll be fine. <laughs> hey, Aiken. Go ahead, Aiken. Sit up. Oh, no. I, I, was, I was totally with you on that. I, I couldn't agree with you more. So, um, yeah, no. That, I, I ramble too sometimes. So it's quite all right. We do that. Cool. Definitely do that. But, uh, yeah, to add to it, I think um, – I think what we what we're here to do is just to um to help you know like this whole awakening process like we, we we've been talking about and with our talent and with our abilities and with our knowledge we're able to uh kind of uh turn this whole thing around and I think we're on the right track just by discussing and talking about how 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 we can change it and and that's that's the that's the key is just discussion openness and really sharing and trading ideas on how to kind of combat this uh this whole paradigm really you know yeah, totally. well said. Mm -hmm. And what we have here with Friends of Freeman Network, the FriendshipAgenda.com, is this is the start of it. We are literally building a network together. Mm -hmm. And I love, love just chatting with everybody on this website as much as possible, just reaching out to everybody, saying hi, making, making friends in real life, basically. Because like Carolyn said, there's going to be a time, because we could sit here and circle jerk all day on the Internet about the New World Order and stuff, but we got to get back in the Matrix and literally I, start leading by example and stuff. Unplugging people, yeah. Yeah. I think a really good point to make is your dollar is also your vote. You know, if you see shopping at the uh, big corporations, then you're voting to keep them. So yeah. You try, like they said, if everybody for the next two years didn't shop at a big corporation for their Christmas presents, so they went to somebody else, to an independent shop or an artist or, you know, a craftsperson. Yeah, that'd be awesome. We would awesome. take down the corporations in two years. Wow, that's brilliant. So just brilliant, keep that in Andrew. mind when you're shopping. Yeah, Andrew, that is brilliant. You have a year. Let's do it. Yeah, and like I said a couple shows ago, that's a great point, Angela, by the way. Yeah, yeah definitely yeah. if you boycott the corporations as much as possible, like Coca-Cola. I got firsthand glimpse of the Coca-Cola a production here in in Southern California, and it's a it's a beast, it's a behemoth, and it has nothing to do with, uh, you know, giving the public any sort of nutrients or anything healthy. They it's just profit to them, and we can easily topple these guys if everyone collectively just stopped buying their stuff or shopping at Walmart and all those things. We can bring down these chains easily. It only takes like a fifteen percent profit margin, I think, and they would topple. And that's all. So it just, yeah, it literally just takes an effort, a collective effort. But, you know, good luck, you know, trying to convince a lot of these zombies. That's the challenge that we're all finding, and it sucks. I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, who would have thought last year 99% of us would be uh, standing up to protest them, you know? Amen, Angela. Amen. People are yeah. listening to the 99%. If the 99% are saying your dollar is your vote, they'll be like, why? Really? We can take them down? Yeah. We are a group. We're the biggest group. Right. Yes. Like Freeman said, control the food and the fuel, and they're they're helpless. They need us. Right. That's why they're you know pushing the martial law agenda and the you know unpatriot act and the you know unsupreme court because they know if we really do wake up, they're in deep shit. I mean, I, David shit. I've been saying that they're for gone. a second. They're not here anymore. You know? We voted them out. Exactly. And you're, what you said was brilliant about. You know, for both this coming Halloween, this coming Thanksgiving, this ba yeah, this coming hard. Christmas and Hanukkah and Rosh Hashanah, if people would sit there and say, buy local and buy, hey, get, you know, get some more, you know, buy healthy stuff from the local markets. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, because I've got international friends, too. We're not trying to diss that we don't want to buy from them. But we're trying to say, you know, do support the local people versus the transnational people um, and, and, and go to the smaller places, like I said, the craft people. Or if you know somebody that's elderly or disabled that can make something that you could say, would you make something for my, my, my grandkids or my nieces, my nephews? I, I got a boyfriend. Would you do this for me? Would you make a scarf? You know, ask somebody you know that probably even needs the money to do these the things. The mom and pop shop. Or, yeah, or, you know, yeah. plant Buy some local. plant. 
yeah, create a plant that we could put into our garden next year, you know, and start growing something. I, you know, we could actually really start a serious movement. And these guys will be scared to death. Yeah. I mean, if these banksters, I think, are worried. The top guys on top are. The ones who are really smart are. You yeah, know? definitely. Hey, we Angela, got that a, was just brilliant. Thank you, Angela. That was lovely. Hey, we got a caller from 405 area code. We will bring them in. One second, guys. Hello, 405. You're live on the Type 1 Radio Lounge. Hi. Hey, guys. How's it going it, out there? It, hey, Freighter. No, this is Brandon. <laughs> oh, Brandon. Sorry. Hey, hey, who am I speaking with? Uh, I've been listening for the last 10 minutes, and I um, heard you talking about, you know, Occupy Wall Street and, and everything like that. Um, is that you, Ange? Yes. All right. How are you doing, Ange? Good. How are you? Um, pretty well. I'm just getting back from Occupy Philly. I've been down on the streets all day. Oh, no nice. way. Really? Dude, I'm in, I'm in um, Central PA, dude. Oh, no how, way. Yeah, man. How, uh, how was it down there? I'm like an I'm like an hour and a half away though, but I, I heard uh, was, it was going down there, down there. Yeah, there was there was a large group of people. We had a um, a large contingent. We you know just marched down. I think it was Market Street, but you know I've only been here for a couple of days, so I'm just getting my bearings. Uh, yeah, but yeah we had like a there. half a mile march, and you know and we wow, were quite quite you know, some waves, wow. quite a few waves being there. Awesome. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. Philly, I know. Philly's crazy down there, so it's it's it must have been great. Oh man. Yeah. Right. Who is this? Who am I speaking with here? Oh no, this is uh, this is uh, Gene with Metasabian, the 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 crew that uh, oh. we uh, yeah we we're we're producing our own comic book that's gonna that's basically laying out that's putting out the information, a real real contemporary work, man, and it's all about the artwork and telling people what's really going on. So they can wake up, and that's what we have to do. We have to really produce this type of work to uh, help awaken the people who who were sleeping. Because I felt I was in the system too. I was I was just like you, um, you know, the other people like eating McDonald's now, understanding everything. You know, I don't do any of that. I don't don't watch TV. Just really get back to uh, knowing who you are and and awakening to that possibility. Really, so I'm so with it though. Right on, right on. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, so Philly, you know, there's a lot of work going on here, and, um, you know, there's a lot of other cities, and it's an interesting thing because everybody's coming together, and, and they, they feel drawn to do something, and, and my concern is, is that maybe um, a lot of it's misdirected, and I think a lot of what we're here to do is to is to sort of uh, clarify exactly what it is that we're, we're trying to do, what kind of change we're trying to make, and... You know, instead of just shifting from capitalism to socialism, that's not going to accomplish anything. And it kind of discouraged me just a little bit that a lot of people at Occupy Philly were, you know, um, focused on socialism, when that's just, you know, the, the, the flip side of the same coin. Yeah. And Are you sure there was a disinfo? Oh, yeah. Are you sure there was a disinfo or provocateurs too? I mean, they want to kind of you mm-hmm. know tilt things to make everybody dis, you know divide and distract and kind of dis- splinter the groups. So you got to be careful of that you know. That's right. That's a great point. You know, and that's, that's that's what I'm getting at is that you know the people that have a good understanding of how a good functional uh, society, a good functional economy would work. You know, to, to clarify that image and to present that, get that out there, and, and have that to be what Occupy Wall Street, Occupy whatever town you're in, is all about. Send the right message. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that the same banksters that funded Hitler funded Lenin and Mao. I mean, it's like you go to the extreme; it doesn't matter. Totalitarian you know, and oligars, gar, oligarchies are the same thing. When you only got an elite on top, it doesn't matter what name you put, label you put on it. Mm-hmm. You only have the 99 controlling their own destiny. When you only have a handful on top, it doesn't matter, you know, if you call it red or you call it Hitler or you, whatever you call it, you know, that's the problem. The banksters just want to keep dividing us, whether it's a cold war or a hot war. They're profiting at the same time. That's right. That's right. And, you know, that's another point that was being made was that, uh, you know, people are saying uh, money for jobs, not money for war. And sure, I mean, I don't want to see money going into war either, but, you know, jobs, that's not the solution. That's still putting the bankers still right. at the top. Yeah. 
you know, and the, the solution comes in a circulation. There needs to be a circulation of those funds from the top to the bottom, back to the top again, all the way around. It needs to be a circulation of funds, and that will not happen with jobs because the rich don't have jobs. They have assets, and they make their money off of those assets, not off of jobs. And we work those jobs to develop their assets. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so uh, the, wor the workers are the pawns. You're right. You said it. You said it perfectly. So right. Brandon, uh, Brandon, last week he, I believe, made a presentation to the Tesla Science Foundation. Is that correct? Cool. Yeah, that's right. I met up with uh, the Tesla Science Foundation in Philly. They were at their uh, annual uh, board meeting and set awesome. um, in set it on their minutes and everything. And, and got to meet up with a bunch of the um, key members of the foundation and. Uh, pitched the uh, idea of the Type 1 Roadshow to them. Um, nice. And that was really interesting because they are interested in coming on board uh, in some degree. There's a lot of discussion left to, to be had, but, um, you know, they, they, their goal really is to um, get out and educate people on Nikola Tesla's story and his technologies, and, you know, they want to be a part of the caravan in a way that they can spread their message, which coincides with, you know, the message of the caravan, free energy, freedom, free everything. Wonderful. Free information. Awesome. Hey, you got any kind of link to that? Can you also any kind of website link or something? We can kind of look into that? Or you got any of the stuff that you presented on a website or something? Well, well, Are you on uh, Facebook? Are you on Friend of Freeman? Are you on Facebook? Where are you at? Yeah, I'm on Friends of Freeman. Um, I'm on Friends of Freeman. I'm at an uh, involved observer. Cool. He's the he's author of Friends of Freeman. Yeah, oh yeah, he he created the Friends of Freeman website, Brand. <laughs> oh my God. Oh oh gosh. Let me wait. Let me get on my knees. I'm sorry. I didn't realize who I was <laughs> talking to. Jesus. I'm yeah, sorry. That's what the with, with freedom. Let me genuflect here. I'm sorry. Hierarchy. <laughs> oh, if you you created that, I got to talk to you. All right. Yeah, well, Brandon, you're well, awesome. Here, oh, thank you for doing that, by the way. No, you're welcome. My pleasure. You know what? And we need you don't you know what you need to do? You need to have a thing though that when people go on the Friend of Freeman, they can bring all their information over from Facebook. You wanna do that? You'll make a million bucks. I swear to God. Because we need <laughs> to do that so that people can go from their Facebook and bring all that stuff over there without spending hours bringing over all the pictures and cool stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's actually a way to do that. Um okay. oh, it requires awesome. it requires a few more dollars a month, but it may be worth it. So I'll look into that. I'm telling you, it would be worth it because all the pictures right now, we could bring it over there and it make it so much easier. And people could sign up. And you know how like, it pops up where it says you want to join? Uh, you could just connect through Facebook. Then you could bring all your you know, your, your info and, pardon me, crap over there. That would be awesome. Sure. That's great. I mean, I've got like three IDs now because I can't figure out some of the stuff I'm doing. But, you know, I'm just trying to do too many things at once. So, but, I mean, if the easier you make it, the better. And, you know, we got to keep, like I said, you know, we – Friend of Freeman is the best place to go for the social network for all of us that already have gotten aware. Yeah. But we got to bring some of those sheeple over too, so we don't want to we don't want to totally hang up on whatever the hell. I haven't been on Google Plus yet, but you know we got to bring the Facebook people over. But right now, that's a good okay. way to reach the you know sheeple. Uh, okay. Okay. I got invited we'll to Google up. Plus so many times I can't even I can't do all this crap anymore. Right? Exactly. <laughs> I know. I can't. I can't even. Yeah. I'm like I don't have you time to Twitter. Give me a break. You know I'm I, lucky. I, I, uh, with all the integration happening, it's gonna it's starting to become a lot easier because I just got this uh, a new phone, you know what I mean? And now it's like this thing is becoming so everything's integrated. Like if you want to have something on Facebook and Twitter or this and that, it's starting to happen now. So, but see, that's well, if you got the money to have those phones. But see, there's more and more right. people losing their jobs are, that are barely scraping away. And they're on, they're they're going to the library to hook up, or they're going to their mom's house, or their yeah. parents' house, or their ex their ex boyfriend's house, or their ex girlfriend's house. We got to make it as simple as possible because yeah. we don't want to cut anybody out. Yeah, you know the thing that I found is like I since I since I got into waking, I was really I, I really my whole lifestyle was really changing. My diet changing. My I mean you know if if you're if you're switching your life, there's money to be saved, especially if you're uh. If you're awakened and you're 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 uh, you're not really into the materialistic thing, and you're you're trying to uh, you know buy a new shirt every week or something, you know people are doing some wild stuff. And I'm I really don't buy clothes. I really don't watch TV. I really don't do all these things that other people do that are still in the system. That it's just a it's just a brainwashing thing. That any money that they have, they have to spend it on something that's really to either 
get them some sort of joy or happiness because their lives really suck or their jobs really suck. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a combination. Just use your money wisely. I, hopefully, I mean, you know, as long as it lasts because who knows what's going to happen. But for the time being, I think we've got to just be wise about it and just and then prioritize, really. Prioritize our, our what we want to do and organize a little bit because nowhere, nowhere near am I organized. And I find that I have to be that way to, in some some way to just kind of compete and be be um, ahead of the game and try to com- try to um, combat the new world order the way that they're organized well, you know, they're like a well-oiled machine, you know what I mean? And we, we got to kind of match them in some way to just, um, just to kind of outnumber that. Well, we are, we are outnumbering them, but we have to just keep, keep organized so we can bring more people, awaken more people. And it, it makes it a lot easier, trust me. And I think we're going to be at the, we're in the beginning cusp, really. We're the first group of people, uh, not the first group, but first generation of, of, of creative minds who are really adding the new kind of content to wake up people, to really tell the truth, to really kind of uh, switch the mode, you know, a little bit. So I think we're going to be famous later on. I, I seriously see it. I kid you not. We're well, going to laugh about this years later. Whether, we have to, whether we're famous or we actually can just pass on the information, I think it's brilliant. But what you said was fantastic. Yeah, thank you, sir. I, I just, you know, sometimes, you know, it's all about opening our, our hearts and, and, and connecting to that. That, that good word that we have. We all have our, our truth. We just have to speak it, you know what I mean? And it's there. I think we, we I've, I've seen people talk, and I'm like, man, I feel the same way, or vice versa. And it's uh, it's, it's, it's shared all over, you know what I mean? We're, we're, we're slowly integrating. We're all kind of like understanding our energies and, and, and connecting in, in many ways. So it's, a, it's an integration. I think more and more people are going to be more aware as this whole transition happens, really. And Aiken, oh, and I'm just going to tell everyone, Aiken is, and his crew, the Metasabian crew, they have their comic book, Metasabian, which is a oh, spectacular right. comic, yeah. really dynamic <laughs> art, oh, yeah. and it's dirt cheap. I <laughs> highly recommend everyone get one. Support these yeah, we've got the full colored version out. Yeah, check out metasabian.com. It's really insightful. I mean, the first book is great, but wait, the second book is even better. That's when uh, you'll actually... Freeman is going to be uh, uh, in sec- Lobo. You're in there, bro. Uh, um, we have a lot of guest appearance in there. It's really all about awakening humanity to uh, tap into their true potential, their true uh, um, un- untapped potential that, that we all have lying within us. And um, and it's really educating a lot about, I mean, we're talking about chakras. We're talking about the uh, the, the deep-rooted, and you know, ancient past. We're talking about a lot of things. And we're talking about our, our creative minds, really. And, and and just expanding our, our, our universe in a, in a new way. So I think with good content, good information, um, and um, and the truth, you know, that that that's gonna be that that that's gonna be the new content. That's what people are gonna be really looking for. Because I think we've been lied to for so long. We've been brainwashed for so long that um, the only thing left is wow. Let's 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 go back to this truth thing and let's let's really dig the uh, you know true history. Let's go into true. Um, you know, true information to, to, so we know who we are, what we're about, what's humanity about, what, you know, what all this stuff means and why is it changing as we're changing? Like, as I'm becoming more aware, I'm, beco- I'm finding out, like, wow, this whole New World Order thing exists and all this stuff. It's like a new adventure. Reality is really what we make of it. we got to just learn more about it, I think, you know? Hey, do me a favor. Put, put, put one. You got an example or a sample that you could put on my page? Seriously, yeah. I got like five thousand people, and I'll tell them all to send it to other people. Oh, yeah. to other people that are journalists too. Yeah. Dude. Oh, you got I, it. I would love to see that. And I mean, both on the Freeman page, but also on the Facebook page. And yeah. I'm telling you, you got to. I mean, unless I'm sitting in the Hoosco for being a lawn care, you know, fugitive criminal. You know, I'm, I'm a dangerous person here. Oh, absolutely. You know. Yeah, you're probably yeah. getting listened to right now. Wait, what? What are you on Facebook? Just so we know. So, uh, uh, Carolyn R. Uh, Carolyn Rose Goida, G O Y D A. There's so few with that last name. You can't miss me. C A R O L L Y N R O S E G O Y D N. Oh, well, I'm also on Facebook. I'm on Friend of Freeman. I, we want to keep everybody on Friends of Freeman too. But on Facebook, it's Carolyn Rose Goida, and the last name's G O Y D A. And there's very few of us. And I'm I'm already at five thousand, but that's okay. Subscribe and people come and go. So you know, I, I I bring people on all the time, and if people come Deadwood, I ask them if they you know if you just want to be a subscriber, do that instead of being on there. And I'm gonna have a 
I got to create another page. I just haven't yet. But put the put some of the cartoons on there, and you know what? You can even I I, I want you to try to put a challenge out there to tell people to like come up with some ideas and suggestions too, and kind of throw them at you. I mean, I've got a great group that's international. It, it covers like. 65 countries. It's every every state in the union, every province of Canada, every part of the EU, every part of the UK, Philippines, South Korea, um, uh, China, believe it or not, and Philippines, uh, Australia, New Zealand, um, South Africa, Nigeria, everything in the Middle East from oh, wow. Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan. I've got the Ukraine. A whole bunch of people in the Romania. I don't know what's what? going on there. But Iceland. Uh, the only countries I don't have are Greenland. Congo, and I was just this close to getting somebody at the Antarctic uh, place, and I've got to get that. I, I got to get a new person down there now because I, I just want to be able to say I've got somebody, somebody at the goddamn South Pole. That is that's cool. Cause I want to go there someday. But you know, it's like there's so many people everywhere, and I'm telling you, put your cartoon on there, and we'll put a challenge out there. We'll make yeah. it one of my photo albums, and say, hey. We want some suggestions, and we're going to make your cartoon a kick-ass thing, especially if you got Freeman. you got Lobo in there. Christ, I'll watch that. <laughs> but yeah. we got to make it audio because I think his, his voice is just so sexy. Oh, and we got to get Nick on yeah. there, too. Carolyn, yeah. with, your, with your enthusiasm, I got, I'd love to make you a meta statement. You can promote heavily, heavily. Yes, Carolyn, that's fantastic. I'm, I'm actually – I'm not adding you as a friend right now, so you uh, i got to get over my shyness, don't you think? Oh, <laughs> my shyness. What? <laughs> so, uh, talking about you'll never know. You know, honestly, I have got grade school report cards. I went. I, I was. I was. Um, uh, believe it or not, I baptized Ukrainian Catholic in the Greek rite. It doesn't even exist where I live anymore. They they closed wow. all the churches. So I went to these Roman Catholic churches. So these nuns used to always send these report cards home to my parents, going, "We've got to break Carolyn out of her shyness." Wow. I don't know. I've got. I'm working on it. Uh, I think you're good, but. It's, Okay. It's, it's hey, just, uh, you know. Yeah. Hey, uh, we're entering the last ten minutes of the show. We got a caller right. calling. I'd like to take that, and uh, also just want to say hi to everyone on the friendship agenda chat room. They're talking about porn, which is excellent. Uh, <laughs> porn. Porn. <laughs> porn. Is there a camera on? Is there a camera on? I got to put some clothes on. Nobody told me to put clothes on for the show. Damn. Hey, caller from 785, you're live on Type 1 Radio. What's up? I guess not. I think it's... Oh, thank me. God. I had a call Angela, back did in. You, Angela, uh, would you get dressed? Everybody's watching you. No, I got dropped because I had a call back in. I'm 785. <laughs> well, they're oh, talking about porn. I, have a question I don't know what's for Aiken, going on. Though. Yeah. You have a question for Aiken? Go for it. Um, so your your magazine, the Metasapien, it's also very geared towards children and helping them awaken, true? Absolutely. We actually are, are working on a, uh, something for even the younger kids uh, called Meta Kids. And Meta means uh, beyond, really. That's what it's all, you know, if you're talking about metaphysical, meta, beyond reality and all that stuff, that's really what it's all about. Um, the the whole idea with, um, for the younger group, because, you know, it's, I was really into comic books at a, you know, when I was around like a teenager, a young teenager, but... Um, I think we, we are, we're already talking about um, working something out for the younger kids, talking about fluoride and, and yeah. things like that, the wine and the water, and all these different concepts to really educate the younger generation. But um, for, for Metasapien, it's actually for um, uh, the teens to adults because it deals with, you know, social, political, economical trials and all this kind of thing, and it deals with a spiritual aspects and different things like that, which Mike. we all need to expand on but uh, i think it's it's it, with a little bit more support i think we did we can definitely capture a whole audience uh from young to old and, and every everywhere in between really my 10 year old was re was checking out freeman's version and she thought it was brilliant and she thought it was for children awesome. <laughs> she understood it. Basic, yeah i think it's yeah it, you know she i don't might be a little more awake than most kids but yeah <laughs> Exactly. A lot of things, hey. you know, a lot, if you're not awake, and really, a lot of things can just really go over your head, and you just don't have any. I think that's really what's going on. It, and and as as our awareness, you know, increases, and people who are not awake slowly begin begin to like kind of see things a little differently. I think that's really what it's all about. We're just waiting for the the that awake, you know, that poop in our eye to clear out, and and so we can see better. Really, that's what, really what what's going on, I think, you know? And, you know, we're, 
a lot of us are the children of the flower child generation. We're their children. Yeah. They're the Got grandparents them. now. Yeah, they're grand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. You know, I've been trying to play matchmaker with all these friends of Freeman. There's a lot of hot singles on uh, friends of Freeman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we're going to uh, create our, our new civilization together, we definitely got to get on this spawning thing and um, <laughs> multiply. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah. I have, you haven't called me yet. <laughs> you know, what? I I've been calling the number you gave me, Carolyn. Honestly. <laughs> I, I put, Brandon, I put, a, a, I put a towel over my camera. Button. I got worried about the porn thing. I put clothes on, okay? But maybe I should take them back off. <laughs> Brandon, that you need to put a single or worried, Mary you know? button so we can tell. There's no button. Well, uh, that's an interesting oh. point. Uh, no, yeah, no, Mary. No, Mary. <laughs> no, Mary. Yeah, just looking and smiling. <laughs> okay, guys. Somebody needs to create a group, right? I think yeah, we need to have and... group. Group is good. Group is good. Group is good. <laughs> well, you know, it would be handier if it was under age. I'm married, so I'm not looking at those, but, you know, it would be handier. <laughs> we don't, wait, what are we the ages for? Come on now. Let's don't be age, what do you call it, age prejudice now, or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think they mean to create a group on Friends of Freeman. Well, I mean, obviously, a, I mean, no children, but, you know, once you're adult, it doesn't matter. <laughs> As long as you're sentient and, re and sentient and reasonable. Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> okay, that okay. They, they want to get in on it. That's why they want their names. On, they want their. Hey, you guys got to send your pictures from the Brighton, okay? I want. We want to see pictures. Pictures. But please, you no frontal. It. No frontal. This is not. What is that movie they made over there? What was that British movie? I Monty. The, we don't want the full Monty. We want you to like you know <laughs> some sideways and some. Good facial pictures. We, I don't. I don't trust the guys in Brighton. We don't want any full Montys, okay? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> hey, uh, Jim four twenty in the chat room says he he loves milfs. You know, so that's another thing for you guys. There, it's funny. Okay. You guys are nuts. <laughs> hey, we got this is the last <laughs> last three minutes of the show, guys. So I think we'll be broadcasting next week from the Type One Congress in Maryland. I think we're gonna try that. So it's gonna uh, be um, yeah, Freeman. Right. Right. You guys. Will you guys call me if I'm in jail? I mean, no, I am kind of got. I got a warrant, you know. Oh man, <laughs> Carolyn, okay now. I, I could be in. I could be in jail over this lawn issue. I don't know. And yeah. just, just for growing food on it? On the no, it's. it's huh? I don't know. It's a warrant for municipal court code for law uh, lawn care. I don't know. I don't know. I feel pretty dangerous. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty wild tonight. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Yeah, you rebel. You rebel. You, know, yeah, you know, I'm pretty, hey, you know, when you mess around with lawns, you know, we're talking serious stuff here. Watch out. Watch <laughs> out. Hey, you know, these guys are worried about how tall my grass is. They don't know where to go. <laughs> All right, guys. So, you know, uh, one by you know, one. Also, uh, while while we ahead. have a minute, I, I also wanted to um, plug Freighter's show tonight. I, I was talking to Freighter yeah. X earlier tonight, and he wanted to call in, but... He has some personal matters to tend to, and so his show is going to be coming on tonight um, with Radio Free Humanity. That's at 10 p.m. Central, um, 11 p.m. Eastern, and uh, I'm going to be on the first 15 or 20 minutes, and we're going to be talking about the uh, Type 1 Roadshow and the Congress that's going to be happening uh, next weekend in Washington, D.C. So, wow. Wonderful. Yeah, just... Um, Sounds good, you know, and then John Lamb last, right? That's yeah, right, and John Lash is coming on after that, and it's going to be a hey, great show tonight. So uh, put yeah, that on. Check out put put, that, put a note on. Put a note on friend of Freeman's, and if you you know if you can think about it, send it on my page, and I'll send it out to several tens of thousands. We'll get it out there, okay? Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm listening definitely. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah, um, well, since we got a few more minutes, but yeah, and also we we should all promote real quick. Uh, definitely with. Uh, uh, check us out, metasabian.com. Uh, if you haven't ordered the book, it, the colored issue is out, metasabian.com. It, it's a really fantastic read, uh, more to come. And the second issue is out. It'll be out definitely later this year. And it's going to be uh, amazing with, with Freeman, Lobo, Tanya's in there, uh, a few a few more. So we're just kind of trying to trying to cha um, set this thing up and, and change change the paradigm. Let's awaken people, all right? Hey, can I say thank? Can I say thank you to Eddie Duke who sent me a pizza while we're on the air to help me keep going here? <laughs> and, 
And any, you know, and the people that some people actually helped me stay here at the hotel, and I, some of those don't. I don't know their name out, but Eddie has been fantastic. So I got to say thank you, Eddie. The pizza was awesome, hon. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye from Brighton. Goodbye from Brighton. We're on delay. Bye. Bye. We love you guys. Love you guys. And uh, yes, everybody, say you know. <laughs> Give your well wishes to Freeman and Jamie as they are hitting the road next week. They're leaving the house for good. So everyone be sure to go on Freeman uh, Facebook and just wish them well. And uh, also want to thank you guys in the chat room for listening. Everybody in front of Freeman, friendshipagenda.com. And uh, I have a gift for you guys in the chat room. Uh, you guys have, have been following my action web series, uh, God Rewards the Fearless. I have a little cut for you to share. It's not a, an official cut. This isn't for the public. This is a top secret unlisted uh, link. <laughs> yeah. And I'm dropping it in the chat room right Yay! now. Yeah! 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 And uh, I guess that's it, guys. Have a lovely weekend. This song goes out to Freeman and Jamie and Monty as they hit the road. And this one goes out to all of you as well. I love all you guys. Have a lovely weekend. I'll talk to you next week. Goodbye to Freeman and Jamie's back porch. Be hugged. Goodbye.